This report, the state Republican Party wants an investigation in every county in Minnesota. And Governor Plenty tells Fox News Channel's Fox and Friends he thinks it's possible felons had an impact. They seem to have found credible evidence that many felons who are not supposed to be voting actually voted in the Franken-Coleman election. I suspect they favored Al Franken. I don't know that. But if that gets uh, turned out to be true, they may have flipped the election in a very close election. There were only a few hundred vote difference, as you know. Senator Franken's office is not commenting on the report. Norm, Norm Coleman is only saying that he's looking forward and thinks 2010 will be a good year for Republicans. And even if Minnesota majority is right about felony voters, nothing would change the election. It's already been certified. Here's how close it was in the end. Al Franken beating Norm Coleman by just 312 votes. And that was after seven months of recounts and court challenges. Well, tonight, Dan McGrath, the executive director of Minnesota Majority, is joining us. Dan, first off, your report says more than a thousand felons may have voted. So, so where's your proof? Well, it's not rocket science. Court records, registration cards, signed roster pages. It's, it's uh, pretty straightforward. And how long did it take you to accumulate this data? Well, we began this in April of 2009, and we've been working on it off and on, along with some other issues ever since. Okay, so you've turned all of this over to several county attorneys. Some of them are claiming only a handful of the cases are valid. In fact, here's what Phil Carruthers of the Ramsey County Prosecutor's Office said this afternoon. We've charged about 30 cases of a felon either registering to vote or voting. Uh, so it's a pretty small number. And then even within that, about half of them are people, felons, who registered but did not actually vote. But Carruthers says there is something to report. It's just not on the scale that uh, you're alleging. So how do you respond? Well, Carruthers' data is actually not very reliable, we found, because uh, he said that out of the 30 people that Ramsey County charged, uh, half of them actually did not vote, that they had only registered to vote. They were charged and uh, convicted for that crime. Well, the, the documents that I just held up for you are actually an example of somebody that they say only registered but did not vote. But here's the roster page the signature. So you're saying that the county attorney's uh, office and the prosecutors in Ramsey County are wrong? That's what I'm saying, yes. So uh, what do you do now? Do you head forward down there and uh, show them your proof? Where does it go from here? Well, I've offered to have a meeting with the county attorneys in Ramsey uh, on four or five different occasions. and I've been rebuffed every time. Uh, I've been wanting to sit down and show them the paper documentation that we have to help guide their investigation, provide them a little assistance, but they've just not been interested in that. Does this have to start with the county attorneys, or could you go to the state attorney general or somebody else at a higher level? We have asked Lori Swanson to look into this. We've also asked the Department of Justice to look into it because we didn't feel like we were getting any traction with state officials. Uh, Lori, uh, Lori Swanson said not her job. And the Department of Justice never bothered to respond to two letters, one sent in 2008 and one sent in 2009. Well, Tom Lyden mentioned earlier that this isn't going to change the results of the election, but it is going to open up a lot of eyes if indeed your data is accurate and right on the money and true. The head of the state GOP is calling for all county attorneys to launch an investigation. So what do you hope is accomplished here? Well, we're hoping to shine some light on this and prevent the recurrence of these kind of problems in the 2010 election coming up just in November here. Uh, you, we can't clean up the problems of 2008 by now. How are we going to protect the integrity in 2010? And, you know, how many people do you have uh, helping you collect all of this? We've had about 30 volunteers off and on coming into the office, helping us sift through documents, uh, looking at computer records. Uh, similar process to what uh, Fox 9 did back before the election to find the felons registering in the first place. Okay, so are these all conservatives, GOPs? Or are you getting people all across the spectrum? Well, our, our volunteers are primarily from our membership base, and they're their conservative group. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to lead some people to say this is pretty uh, much tipped to one side. Well, the, the documentation is documentation. It doesn't matter who looks at it. I could show it to you, and you'd see that it's pretty clear. Yeah, well, we're taking your word for it tonight because you showed it to us before we went on the air. You know, the recount lasted seven months. Both Norm Coleman and Al Franken had teams of high-paid lawyers. Didn't Coleman's or Franken's people catch any of this back then? Unfortunately, they didn't, and they couldn't have because the voter registration file that showed who voted in 2008 wasn't even updated until April of 2009, six months after the election. Uh, the electronic matches that we did to zero in on this were just not possible until then. Well, Dan McGrath, the executive director of Minnesota Majority, we thank you for joining us. I think uh, you're going to see more and more people talking about this. It's taken a while for it to come about, and we'll see where it goes. Thank you. All right.